Supplemental log. Friday, January 14, 2010. Second day of the Russian New Year. Look at this beauty. Yeah, it's all in Russian. Look at mom and dad. <laughs> Look at this one. Look at this. Imperial. Imperial Beach. Yeah. That's the guy that roams the seven seas with the seven mermaids. <laughs> Happy New Year, folks. Thanks for last night. I got... I, I really ate well and drank hearty. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh. Hey, everybody. How you doing? You like my little hat? <laughs> That's my Russian shop cup. Woo! Celebrating the Russian New Year. And thanks to my folks. Oh my God! What'd you put inside? Um, that's Coca-Cola, Dad. And the vodka? No, no, the vodka's right here, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey everybody, Happy New Year to you. Ain't nothing like being a black Russian from Novosibirsk. <laughs> so you like Novosibirsk? Because I did business with Spahasib, with Vidalina Bielieva. She was a Russian scientist. Hmm. Oh, look at this. Dad got my picture sleeping like a baby. Oh yeah, let me show this, Dad. Let me show this. Look at this. Look at this. He got me sleeping like a baby. Show the other one, Dad. Look at this. He got me sleeping like a baby. Caught me. <laughs> oh, 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 this is nice. This is the one where I look like I'm sleeping like a linen. Yeah. <laughs> you got me good, Pop. I swear to God, that's beautiful. Thanks a lot, man. Next time I'm going to bring you slip Put a cross. cigarette in my mouth and take the picture. <laughs> Woo. Oh, I got to show everybody. When you're a good son and you love your mother, you go on vacation, you don't just bring something back for her, you also do something that dad can be proud of. Don't make noise. Yes, sir. Look at this. <laughs> That's a sign of fertility. Brought back from Florida to my folks. Yeah. Can't make any noise because the children are sleeping downstairs. That's my little nieces, Lana and Annette. Lana is a, a flower child, and Annette is a very sophisticated young lady. Oh yeah, for all of you folks out there, if you see this guy, tell him to come home to his mama. His name is Eugene, okay? He is hurting them people, not being here with them, and getting a chance to see them, them grandchildren. Okay, I'm not trying to take nobody's place here. These people adopted me because they love me, because we're all European and we get along and can live together nicely. Okay, his mama loves him, and she wants she wants she wants a relationship with the grandchildren. Okay, me. If it was me, I'd have been taking him to court. <laughs> but his mama don't want to hurt him. All right, everything I do is I go to court. I'm not violent. I ain't, you know, ain't nothing. Hey, Russian New Year. The black Russian from Novosibirsk. Filia. That's my Russian name. Here's to you. Hmm. Ah. We got a little bit left. Ooh, things go better with coke. Well, you're a housing whistleblower. And the other kind of guy, we're going to play with scent. Let me show you how that works. <coughs> I 
I just want to ask you all a question. Bang. What happened to sin? What happened to sin? Huh? What happened to it? Let me show you what happened to it. What happened to it is when a congressman gets a picture like this with the victim and his special assistant, Miss Ida M. Smith, helped cover it up. Initiated, triggered. I took it there with the guy for him to do something about this and they covered it up. And that was two and a half years ago. This is the same guy I did a campaign video. Told everybody to elect him. I was deceived, I was lied to, and I was played for a fool by the offices of Congressman Gregory W. Meeks, who slandered me, defamed me, committed libel, and referred me to the FBI and said, you ain't crazy. What the hell you put, you refer me to the FBI for? You all tried to cover this up just like you all tried to cover up the housing whistleblower about the redlining scheme of the Bloomberg administration. I'm almost out of time, but I just wanted to tell everybody what they're doing here is a big sin. Sin. You've sinned, Congressman Meeks. You have sinned. It's not about me. It's about your sins. It's about your sins, Congressman Gregory W. Meeks. Bye bye, Carrie's liability, of course. You didn't do anything with your hand, Congressman, but your special assistant did. Your chief of staff did. Your office manager did. One of your staffers did. Call me crazy. All of you have sinned against me. I got to take you people to court. Shirley L. Huntley, you sinned against me, orchestrated your own death threat, and gave bogus information, misleading information to the press. Malcolm Smith, I ain't got nothing against you. It was Ida Smith who told me you was pointing the finger at the congressman, and I told him I'd punish you for it. And I did in my, in my video. Lasted talk about you like a dog. I'm sorry. But I still got to take you to court, because Ken told me I didn't understand racism and didn't know red line. Bang! He's not that good a lawyer. Okay? Assemblywoman Vivian Cook, you've got cancer. You shouldn't be governing. You're incapable of governing because you're too sick to govern. You've got cancer. That's like somebody who's got AIDS. You gotta get off the basketball team. Okay? You get my point? You got cancer. Okay? What's his name? Had got AIDS. And he had to leave basketball. Why? Because your health is more important than you stand in the power to cut deals in Albany. And then you up and leave three months. It was in the newspaper. I'm going to use that against you in court. And then uh, your chief of staff down there in Jamaica, she's a joke. She refused evidence. But you've been getting it by email. You can say you didn't get it. I don't care. But I know you got this one. Right, Vivian Cook? You're from South Carolina, ain't you? Or oh, ain't you, Huntley? You know what that means, don't you? Well, take your time into doing something about it. The longer you take, the better it looks to me. <laughs> I don't care. What you people did to me, y'all shouldn't be allowed to ever do that to anybody. Let me drink to that. I'm a homeless guy. Thanks to the generosity of my folks. And they're cold out there. And I ain't got no money. I have to be here temporarily or else I'll be sleeping on the beach. You don't take advantage of your parents, man. Okay? That was the original sin that was committed against Miss Fronnie Green. That has led to this. See that, Congressman? If you'd have done your job, you wouldn't be as much trouble as you're in now because of your staffers. Shirley Huntley, that's what your son said. Now, how you got Tom Crater writing all that stuff and he's talking to your homeless son in front of the library? I got witnesses. And I gave him $20. That's right. You couldn't find a drug program, drug and alcohol program for your son and your state son. But you guys want to refer me to a homeless shelter. Woo! Councilman Leroy Kyrie, my old boy, Rand's Huff. <laughs> he wants to be made to disappear. Um, what did Rand's Huff say? Rand's Huff said, according to that staff who spoke to me, and I blasted on the internet, got a paper trail, that 
Haiti is 100%, no, Haiti is 90% Christian, 10% Muslim is what Rance Huff said, and 100% voodoo, so what kind of doctor is Dr. Trice? A voodoo doctor, because that's why the chief of staff of, of uh, Assemblywoman Vivian Cook in South Ozone Park asked me, what kind of doctor are ye? I'm not your gynecologist. I'm not your rectal inspector, but bang, I will take that job. Guess what? Bang, that's how that works. For the gynecological inspection and the rectal in in inspection simultaneously. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Needs a refill. Now, all we want to talk about is Philip Dryce exposed this just like I exposed everything else. I'm not crazy. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Does that look like that's supposed to be in the motor pool locker room of the St. Albans Naval Hospital <laughs> two and a half years ago? Well, no. January 25th 2008. You're talking about three years ago. The congressman had knowledge. To, the congressman's office had knowledge two and a half years ago. That's for the lynching of a nigger. I said lynch you a nigger. Lynch you a nigger. Go lynch a nigger. Go lynch a nigger. That's what that says. That's what it says. Go lynch a nigger. Go lynch a nigger. That's what that says. Go lynch a nigger. Mr. President, can you please help me here? The press. Come on now. I know I use a lot of profanity, I do a wild, lot, lot of wild stuff. Now do you understand the meaning to my madness? I'm not mad at all. <laughs> You're a bunch of putts. <laughs> I'm the biggest sinner of all. <laughs> but your sins. You want to cover them, you want to hide them. I'll have to hide myself. I don't. <laughs> I'm a moral guy. Creator of the world, the public court of good morals and ethics. Bang! On television. The Mother's Day documentary. Bang! Two years in a row on television. <laughs> For Thompson, I made you what you were in Queens County. Yes, I did. And everybody taking credit for it. Right, Rashida? Right, Ransha? Bang! A double dose of that. <laughs> All of y'all know about this, don't you? Well, that's what you African Americans did to me as a Haitian. <laughs> that's what you African American staffers in the political offices did to me as a Haitian. Come on, get my mano caca. Ça te fait nous comprendre que c'est américain comme t'es, hein? Ou fou de fou? Mais je vais te dire quelque chose. Je ne suis pas comme toi. Je suis, je suis un, une personne qui était née libérée. Je suis le grand-fils de Boss Anéus de Pont saint jérôme Haïti, pour le prince Haïti, pour le prince Haïti. Je ne suis pas un cochon. Je ne suis pas un cochon. J'étais né avec une personne qui était que ma tête a acheté pour moi. Ah, congratulations. Chingo, Rick de Shimbaka, Young Shina. Take a good look. I am only the messenger. I am only the messenger. I am only the messenger. That's it. What you guys did to me for what I discovered and how I did it and as good as I did it 
Damn! Got the mayor of New York calling Marshal Edward Guy to bag number 14 to tell me he sends his regards. 